Hello there, this presentation will focus on the influences on health decision making and risk behaviours. So I'm sure many of you would be aware that every individual is influenced by a number of factors around them. Uh, and these factors influence their capacity to make healthy decisions. So for example, um, a person is hanging around with a particular peer group who, who might um, engage in smoking or alcohol consumption then that potentially could influence an individual to do the same. So that's an example of the peer group influencing the health decision-making of a young person. So the presentation will go through in a little bit more depth some of the other factors that impact. So uh, listen in and I hope it's helpful. Okay, so firstly let's look at what we call the determinants of health or the influences on health decision-making and risk behaviour. So these determinants or influences are uh, the, the five that you need to be aware of uh, for your assessment. So we've got individual factors, which include the factors that are related to the person themselves, so their knowledge and skills, their attitudes and the things that they value. We've got socio-cultural factors, which is a combination of social and cultural factors, and they include family, peers, media, religion, culture and gender expectations. Socioeconomic factors, which really relate to economic factors and factors that can influence somebody's economic status, such as employment, income, and education. And of course, environmental factors, which include a person's geographical location, their access to health services, and also access to technology. And we also have political factors, such as various laws and regulations that guide a person and influence their decision making. So at the end of the presentation, I'm hoping that you can recognise that health decisions and risk behaviours are not simply an individual responsibility, but they are also shaped by a range of influences that surround the individual in the social uh, environment around them. Focusing firstly on individual factors. So we're thinking about knowledge about health and skills that enable people to make healthy decisions. So a good example is if a person has the knowledge to understand what is in their food, so you know they might uh, understand that eating McDonald's is not great for your health because it contains a lot of saturated fats and, and all of those bad things. If you're aware of that, then you may actually decide to choose a healthier option instead. So if you have that knowledge individually then you can make that decision and also skills that enable people to make healthy decisions so skills might be driving skills for example in the car if you have good good skills and understand what to what to do and what not to do then you're able to um, apply those skills and then um, keep safe whilst you're driving and then down below you can see that we've got the attitudes and values. So these are the attitudes a person has towards their health and the decisions that they make. So for example, a young person driving may actually um, believe that it's okay to speed 10 kilometres over the speed limit because they think, oh, it's okay, it won't hurt me, uh, I'm invincible. Uh, that kind of attitude, that reckless attitude, obviously is going to increase uh, their risk of having a car accident. So you can see how their attitudes, which is an individual factor, can actually enhance or, or uh, lead to a greater risk and lead to poorer decisions. So moving on to sociocultural factors, uh, you can see that there are a number on the screen, family, media, gender, peer group, religion and cultural background. So each of these factors can actually shape the knowledge, uh, the skills, and the attitudes and values which were mentioned previously. For example, the family. Think about family values and how your family actually shapes your values and attitudes. So for example, if your parents are very cautious on the road and they encourage you to be the same uh, when they're uh, teaching you how to drive, then it's, it's likely that you will pick up on those, um, on that knowledge and understanding from your parents and you'll obviously apply those and, and take on those similar attitudes. So your family can influence your attitudes and your, your knowledge and understanding. Media, for example, if you are looking at images online or in magazines, for example, they can actually influence the way that we see ourselves and they could potentially shape how we feel about our body image and then that could lead to 
uh, changes in diet, etc., and possibly lead to an eating disorder. So there's some examples of some uh, some of the sociocultural factors that could influence our decision making and risk behaviours. Another example is, for example, cultural background. Some cultures perhaps are, are okay with uh, consuming alcohol and um, uh, consuming fast food, for example, um, whereas some other cultures are not, potentially some religious cultures perhaps, are not um, okay with alcohol consumption or use of drugs, for example. So you can see how your cultural background and religion could also shape the decisions that you make. Moving on to socioeconomic factors, and this relates to income, education and employment. So this is a very strong influence, and generally, if you look at uh, the research, um, those that are experiencing socioeconomic disadvantage are often, uh, often have very low health outcomes. Uh, often they perhaps don't have enough money to buy nutritious food or they don't have enough money to perhaps um, purchase a gym membership, for example, uh, or they may not have the education or the understanding about what is healthy and what is not healthy. For example, the impact of tobacco smoking on the body uh, and the long-term cancer risk. A person that doesn't have the education may not understand that and therefore continue to smoke as opposed to quitting. And it's important to understand that the three link together. So, for example, your level of education that you have often determines the type of employment that you'll gain. So a higher level of education will lead to, uh, for example, a higher paying job, um, which then a higher paying job obviously brings in more income. Uh, so the more income that a person has... Um, perhaps the better off they are in terms of their health, being able to purchase healthy food, uh, live in a location that's, um, that's um, close to, to parks and, and recreational activities and uh, places where they can get active. And, and so it's very important that we understand that the three are interconnected. And then finally, having a bit of a look at environmental factors, and this relates to geographic location, access to health services and technology and also relates to the environment around us. So think about living in, a, in an environment that is highly polluted or heavily polluted. Um, obviously the people that live in that environment are going to experience uh, a, a detrimental effect on their health. Uh, but if we think about geographic location, we think about rural and urban location or major cities for example, we can see that a person in, in a major city, an individual, is going to be able to access health services a lot more easily, going to be able to access uh, transport options, um, general practitioners, doctors, um, and other health-related services that are actually going to help them to um, learn and also help them to look after themselves and their health. And those in rural areas generally have less access to those services. Um, so your location does link to your access to health services. And we can also think a little bit about uh, to access to technology. This can have a positive and negative effect on people. Um, if we've got access to technology, we can actually have access to the latest health information, uh, the latest health promotion initiatives. Uh, but it can also be something that prevents us from getting active. So if our environment is influenced by technology, uh, in a big way, it means that we may well be uh, sedentary. Um, for example, young children using computers regularly, um, you know, gaming and things like that, and not getting, as opposed to getting active. You can see how your access to technology could actually be a negative thing. So it's important to understand the environmental factors, those things present in the environment. So if we have a quick look at political factors, and these really relate to rules that that guide what we do in our everyday life so for example people driving along the road are governed by speed limits and demerit points and uh, speed cameras and so on and these laws and, and rules actually guide the way people drive or they they can change the way people drive um, we've also got things like um no smoking in particular areas around restaurants and around public places 
And so these laws actually protect people and they actually encourage people to make a safer decision. So a smoker is going to decide not to smoke in a particular area where children are because of the law. There are also a number of laws. We've also had new laws around alcohol consumption uh, in public places and in pubs and clubs. Recently, they're called lockout laws, and they have they have encouraged people to to do the right thing. And actually, um, you know, people are restricted from service and restricted entry into pubs and clubs after one a.m. So it's designed to to stop alcohol fueled violence and and things like that. So the laws around us actually um, provide guidance for individuals and they can influence your decision making. So thank you very much for listening. I hope this has clarified your understanding of the influences on health decision making and risk behaviours. If you have any further questions, please see your teacher.